Squire, how are you today? I'm doing just fine, Dustin. Excellent. I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Of course. Well, I won't keep you too long, but uh, I wanted to ask you first, I know you've done uh, a lot of stuff in your career over the years. Uh, Can you tell the listeners a bit about how you uh, got started in the acting business? Uh, Yeah, I I really don't do that anymore. I grow grapes and make wine. Uh, I've been doing that for 31 Harvest. 31st is coming up. But I started a long time ago as a a young actor in the late 60s. I have a master's in theater. I was teaching high school theater for nine years. And I started acting at night at South Coast Repertory in Southern California. And uh, somebody came to see a show. I ended up going under contract to Universal Studios, uh, one of the last of the contract players. And right after that, got a commercial agent, started doing commercials, and that's where the bulk of uh, income came from over the years. Over the years, I've done about 3,400 television commercials, probably more than anybody else on camera. So I'm very, very happy with that. Well, yeah, you'd be hard-pressed to find uh, a time uh, during the day watching TV uh, back then where you wouldn't see you pop up someplace. I know you even uh, wrote a book about acting in commercials. Yeah, I did in 1980, and it's uh, still in print on our Amazon.com. It's put up by Random House. It's called Acting in Television Commercials by Squire Friedel. It's in fourth edition, and, of course, you've had to update it, or I've had to update it because things are done so differently now with electronic casting, etc., so I had to update it did my headshot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I grew up uh, in the 80s, so of course, uh, people of my age uh, know you as uh, Ronald McDonald. I wanted to ask you a bit about that and how you, you wound up uh, playing that character. Um, if, you, uh, if you grew up during that time and you have a cholesterol problem, it's my fault. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I, it was just another job. I went in and auditioned, and the, I think it was a secret at the time because the original Ronald McDonald that you would recognize was a fellow actor named King Moody, who I knew, and uh, he was a very talented guy, and he was retiring. They were finding a replacement. And so uh, the call went out to agents in Southern California, New York, and Chicago, and the thing was called Operation Red Shoe. I was low in IQ at the time, and my agent nor I didn't understand what Operation Red Shoe uh, meant, but I knew it was for a, probably a fast food. So I went in, and uh, my agent said it was for a clown-like character. And so I said, well, good. So I stopped at Hollywood Magic. I can juggle a little bit. And uh, I bought a couple of magic tricks, and I went and did the audition with my magic tricks and juggled. And uh, I forgot about it. And about three months later, my agent called, and he said, you have a call back for this Operation Red Shoe. And in those days, you would audition quite a bit, and I forgot what it was all about. So I went back in my notes, and I looked, and I said, oh, yeah, I took in the juggling balls and the little flower that went ping, whatever. So I stopped off, uh, picked up my stuff on the way in, opened the door up for the audition, and there's six guys all in Ronald McDonald costume waiting to go in for the audition. So I said, oh, I get it, Operation Red Shoe. <laughs> so I put on the costume and the makeup, just like the other six actors, and got in line, went in and auditioned, did the same thing I did during the original call, juggled and squirted with the flower and things like that. And uh, about... Two months later, I was Ronald McDonald. Well, and I know there were uh, Ronalds before you, but I really feel like your portrayal... There was one before uh, that you would recognize as being Ronald McDonald. People always say, "Isn't wasn't Willard Scott the first Ronald McDonald? Uh, I have a video of the history of McDonald's, and all of the McDonald's, bef- Ronald McDonald before King Moody, did not look like Ronald McDonald. Um, Willard Scott had a box of food in his head and a Dixie cup for a nose. So it did not look like Ronald McDonald. The colors were the same, the yellow and the red outfit, but um, other than that, you would not recognize him as being Ronald McDonald. So I was number two, really, 1986 to 19... No, uh, 1984 to 1991. Well, I think your uh, portrayal really uh, kind of created uh, more of the iconic uh, Ronald McDonald that everyone thinks of today. I mean, and the the commercials were on all the time, and there was always uh, several different ones... Uh, do you? Yeah, we're really quite fun to shoot. Um, I'm I'm a I'm, I'm certainly not a uh, a world class uh, Tony Award actor. I've just done a lot of awful lot of stuff, and I'm a good actor. I'm a journeyman, and I could hit my marks. And I was a very angular actor. Uh, I take pride in the fact that I uh, physically moving. I was a good mover, and uh, I was saying say things that. If you're a good actor, things always happen kind of at right angles. They're not round. And I was good at that. So that's why 
I continue to get hired over and over and again, over and again. The most uh, prolific one over the years was Toyota. I was her spokesman for uh, off and on for almost 29 years. So if you think of me with dark hair, tight skin, and a tuxedo jumping in the air for the Toyotathon all those years, sure, uh, that was me. We created that that character also. But that was the most prolific. That lasted for an awful long time. Yeah, it's not often that somebody has um, you know more than one iconic role that they're known for uh, as far as that goes. On the lines of uh, Ronald McDonald, uh, did you have to do other things outside of the commercials, like uh, the children's hospital and to make appearances and that sort of thing? No, they had 150 Ronalds around the United States that ah. did all of the store openings and the hospitals and things like that. Uh, those guys uh, cast much more as clown characters uh, because they could do all sorts of clown-like things. I could not. I could juggle a little bit, and I could sing. I did musical theater. Uh, but uh, other than that, those guys were really quite good at, at what they did, which is uh, performing, the performing arts. I was only asked to do one Ronald McDonald appearance when I first became Ronald and they thought they could use me at that, so they flew me into Chicago, and I went to a Ronald McDonald house there uh, in costume and in makeup, and the little boy had been taken over to the hospital that I was supposed to see. The Ronald McDonald houses, incidentally, are just the most amazing philanthropic uh, contribution by, I think, any product uh, on the planet. They just are, are incredible at what they do. They allow families to stay close to hospitals when when children are undergoing cancer treatments or other problems. Anyway, we went to this hospital room, and the little boy was bald. He had cancer, and he had tubes all coming out of every orifice. And I sat down on the edge of the bed and started to talk to him, and I just started crying. I, I, I can't do that. So they said, well, let's get Ronald out of here. And that was the only time they ever asked me to do that. Wow. I, I just can't stand to see children in you know, suffering. Sure. It was difficult. Well, and those McDonald characters, you know, Grimace and Hamburglar, uh, Birdie, that was so well known during that time, uh, really kind of helped set McDonald's apart from other restaurants. Uh, you made uh, a joke earlier about the cholesterol. Do you do you feel like that's maybe uh, why they've been phased out over the years? I don't know. Things change, and the character's been going on for a long time, and uh, nothing lasts, particularly in advertising. I'm just glad it lasted as long as it did uh, using me. Uh, I have no idea whether they use Ronald McDonald anymore. I don't watch early morning uh, Saturday um, cartoons. So I don't know how much advertising they do. Uh, I think that, you know, if you, people always say, gee, McDonald's is not the most healthy of foods in the, in the world. And Ray Kroc, who I never met, uh, probably would say it best. He said, we also have salads, and these are uh, the basic food groups. So if you want to sit down and eat 45 cheeseburgers in a row with uh, Coca-Cola, uh, as a chaser, then you're probably going to have a health problem. And the same thing is true, I think, if you just go out and you decide you're only going to eat fruit your entire life, uh, you're not going to live very long. You you need to balance your diet. And uh, so I'm much more of a disciple of you are the person who controls your own destiny. And if you have a weight problem, uh, take a look at your diet and fix it. McDonald's has salads. Uh, I still eat at McDonald's, but I eat salads. Sure. Well, Squire, I want to ask you then uh, how you kind of made the transition uh, into the wine business. I mean, that's uh, not something that all the actors uh, eventually <laughs> wind up in, for sure. Uh, it, it's an interesting, We, like every other actor, we built a house on the beach in Southern California, uh, and we were living there, and I got home from doing a job one day and uh, said hi to my wife and hugged our, our little girl who was a baby crawling around on the floor, and I looked down on the beach in front of us, and there were a bunch of 14-year-old kids having a good time, but they were smoking dope and drinking beer on the beach in Southern California. And I looked at my wife, and we thought, geez, you know, maybe this isn't a perfect place to raise a family. So we thought we would try to move. My dad lived up in the wine country, up in uh, Sonoma Valley. And so we uh, were up visiting him, tasting wine, didn't know very much about wine, but we liked it, and uh, bumped into 26 acres up here in the Valley of the Moon. It was just gorgeous. We walked around, it was all unimproved, there were no roads in. And we fell in love with it. We bought it, started to build a cottage so we'd have a place to stay when we would come up. And I went back down south during the middle of the cottage construction, woke up bolt upright in the middle of the night, awakened my wife and said, what are we doing? I can't move. I'm an actor. There's only two places in the United States I can live and make a really good living, particularly in those days. And uh, I thought, Jesus, uh, what are we going to do? And I thought, well, I'm really good at doing TV commercials. I'd have to give up the theatrical, but that's okay. 
And I thought if I can get one more commercial contract, I had a contract at that time with Toyota, but that was the only one. So I auditioned for everything. I became Carl, the good seasons vegetable guy. I was a spirit of a dawn where I would magically appear in ladies' kitchens telling if they used Dawn dishwashing detergent, their marriage would be more fulfilling. <laughs> I was Mr. Whipple's nephew, Orville Redenbacher's nephew. He didn't send me any of those to be the one. And as fortune would have it, the King Moody was retiring. So I, along with 4,000 other guys in New York, Chicago, and L.A., auditioned. I got the job. And the day I signed the contract is the day we put our house on the market, and we physically began to move up here, and nature supported us quite well. So for the first three years we lived up here, between Toyota and McDonald's, I averaged about 55 plane trips a year. So more than once a week I was driving to the airport in San Francisco to fly somewhere, Los Angeles usually to do the, the McDonald's spots, and Toyota all over the country, New York, Los Angeles, and a lot of right-to-work states because that's where we would go shoot uh, Toyota commercials. So nature supported us quite well. And... Uh, after a while, didn't have to do anything anymore, and we started uh, growing grapes and making wine. If we'd moved to Holland, I would have planted tulips, I guess, but we planted a vineyard. I took some classes at the local junior college, Santa Rosa JC, great bastion of, um, of learning, just a terrific place, and classes are free. took classes at Davis, and we planted a vineyard, and we built a winery, and we planted a second vineyard, and now we lived happily ever after. I'm the luckiest man on the planet. Well, yeah, and it sounds amazing. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot that goes into it. You don't just move out to Sonoma and plant some grapes and then uh, make some wine. I'm, I'm guessing there's a, a lot of ins and a lot of outs. There is. Uh, we have two vineyards here on the property. Uh, I am the grape grower. Um, and when we moved here, I, I have a master's degree, but it's not in enology or viticulture. It's in theater. Uh, and so we took a bunch of classes, and I learned from master's. When we first moved to Sonoma Valley to this property 31 years ago, we were doing a wine tour, a very famous winery down in Sonoma, a very famous winemaker who's now passed away. And he said, oh, you just moved here. And I said, yeah, me and my wife and little girl. He said, wow, did you get any land? And I said, yeah, we got 26 acres of raw land. He said, cool, are you going to plant grapes? And I said, yeah, we are. He said, are you going to make wine? And I said, yeah, we are. And he said, do you know what you're doing? And I said, <laughs> I don't have a clue. And he laughed and said, follow me around. And I followed him around for three years. I learned to make red wine. At the end of three years, I went to someone else and learned to make white wine. That took three more years. And in 2002, I wanted to make port, so I went to a fellow that was a port master and followed him around for two years, and now I have people follow me around. It's not exactly father to son, but it is certainly mentor to apt, willing, and eager student. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's excellent. And you mentioned uh, 31 years now. Uh, for the listeners who are outside of uh, California, is there uh, a good way to, to purchase the wine or maybe have it shipped to them? Uh, you know, the only way you can get our wine is to by belonging to our wine club. We call it a clan. It's a clan with a C, not with a K, so it's politically correct, even if you live in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, but the best thing to do is just go online and see if the wine or the story or whatever just interests you. It's glenlionwinery.com, G-L-E-N-L-Y-O-N, winery.com. My wife is Scottish, and when we were married in 1977, her parents bought me my kilt, which I still wear for most special occasions. As a matter of fact, one year ago, almost to the day, we gave our daughter, our only child, away in marriage up here at Glen Lyon, uh, and I wore that same kilt and bought her husband his kilt, too. Excellent. Well, Squire, I appreciate again the time and I want to ask you if you got anything else. I know you're busy now with the harvest, but is there anything else maybe upcoming or in the works? Harvest hasn't quite begun yet. Uh, right at the end of this month, we'll bring in the first of the whites and then the rosé and then the, uh, the reds. We make 10 different wines. Eight of them are made here on premises and two sparkling wines that our daughter now makes. Our daughter's a Broadway kid. Uh, she grew up here, uh, ended up going to Idlewild Arts Academy and then off to Carnegie Mellon, the oldest theater school in the country, and she's... Uh, been a New York actor, and now is living on the West Coast now that she's married. But Broadway, I mean, that's like playing in the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, excellent. She's the one with talent in the family. <laughs> yeah. You can find her online, too, at Lexi Friedel, L-E-X-Y Friedel, F-R-I-D-E-L-L. -L. Well, if you get out to the West Coast, uh, send me an email and drop by. Um, we don't have tours and tastings uh, unless you set something up beforehand, uh, but I'd love to show you around what we have created here. If you want to just look at it vicariously, just go to the website, glenlionwinery.com, and you can see what we've created, what awesome. Toyota had created and McDonald's had created. <laughs>
Excellent. Again, I grew up watching you, and I really appreciate uh, your time, and I'm glad everything's working out well for you these days. I always waved at you. <laughs> I, I thought that was me you were waving at. <laughs> okay, Dustin. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Right, you too. Bye-bye.